if you think logging is just about printing to the console, you're missing out on some serious superpowers. You've seen log.info a thousand times, but do you really understand how logging works in Spring Boot? Why does everyone talk about SLF4J, Logback, and Log4J2 together? And how can you go from basic logging to production grade logs with structure, context, and rotation? In this video, you'll master Logback, Log4J2, and SLF4J, going way beyond the basics. We will dive into structured logging, MDC for tracing, custom log patterns, and even log file rotation. Whether you're building a monolith or microservices, this knowledge can level up your debugging strategy. Let's start with the basics. Why do we have SLF4J, Logback, and Log4J2 in the same sentence? Is there any difference among these three? Let's begin with SLF4J. It stands for Simple Logging Facade for Java. And like the name suggests, it doesn't do any actual logging. Instead, SLF4J acts as a common interface. Logback and Log4J2 are its implementations. Spring Boot uses Logback by default, but you can plug in Log4J2 if you prefer. You write your logs using SLF4JS methods, and it passes the call to whichever logging backend is present at runtime. Imagine writing your entire app using Log4J APIs, and one day, you decide to switch to Logback. You will have to change hundreds of lines of code. But if you use SLF4J, you just swap the dependency. No code changes needed. This decouples your application code from the logging backend. Clean and future-proof. Logs aren't just for developers anymore. They're consumed by log aggregation tools, alerting systems, and dashboards. Consider these logs. These are hard to read, impossible to parse reliably, and definitely not friendly for log aggregators. That's where structured logging comes in. Instead of plain text, your logs are emitted as structured JSON with clearly defined fields. Structured logging helps machines understand your logs better. It is especially useful for tools like ELK, Loki, Splunk, or any centralized log viewer. Also, it makes searching or debugging with logs pretty easy. With libraries like Logstash-Logback Encoder, we can produce JSON logs that are easy to read and understand by tools and even developers with a simple configuration as shown. Here, we're telling Logback to use a JSON encoder. We define what fields we want, such as timestamp, level, logger, and message. This makes your logs queryable in modern systems. Each log entry becomes a machine-readable object, making it easy to filter, analyze, and trace issues across services. Remember, plain logs are for development, structured logs are for production. Similarly, you can configure Log4J as well for producing JSON logs. A typical REST API receives concurrent requests. When logs for each request are printed, they are mixed together, which becomes hard to identify and debug a particular API request. The solution is MDC or Mapped Diagnostic Context. It lets you store metadata like user ID, transaction ID, or request ID or whatever you want for each request and attach it automatically to all logs in a thread. Simply call mdc.put with a key and its value, which is specific to a request such as request ID. Now, use that key inside your log pattern in configuration file, such as logback.xml. When the logs are printed, they can be identified for each request separately. MDC works with logback. For log4j2, you can use thread context. Sometimes, the default log format isn't sufficient. You want timestamps, thread info, or even MDC values. That's where custom log patterns come in. With custom log patterns, you control what gets printed. Here we define a pattern that includes timestamp in required format, thread name, log level, logger name, 
and request ID from MDC. This makes logs human-friendly and traceable. Logging forever into the same file? That will be a big problem when the file size becomes too large. You need log rotation, which means the log file is split, based on size or date, and older files get compressed or deleted. Log file rotation is configured using rolling policy tag in configuration file. For example, this config rotates logs daily, keeps the last seven days, and ensures logs don't grow beyond 10 megabytes in total. It also specifies the name of backup log file to be created. This is essential in containers, where disk space is limited. Logging can become a bottleneck, if done synchronously, especially in high-load services. Both Logback and Log4j2 support asynchronous logging, pushing logs to a background thread. There are situations where application has gone into hung state and has stopped working at a log statement. Wrap your file appenders inside an async appender and your application threads won't wait for disk writes anymore. Remember, less latency, better throughput. To recap, you now understand how SLF4J works with Logback and Log4J2. You've seen how structured logging makes your logs machine readable. MDC gives you tracing power. Patterns and rotation help you manage and read logs better. Asynchronous logging improves performance and avoids deadlocks. Now you don't just use logging, you understand it. If this video helped level up your Spring Boot skills, consider liking, subscribing, and commenting with the next topic you'd like me to dive into.